Moving right along and we're watching a slightly positive start to the session here ahead of the RBA cash decision at 2.30 p.m. local time here in Sydney. Sean Hickman is here to discuss that further. Sean, good morning to you. So, Good morning, Nadine. Don't think you're a betting man. What is your expectation from the RBA today? Uh, hike or pause? Those are your two options. Pause. Okay. I'm not a betting man, but pause. We've said that for a while. We're going along with CBA. We actually think pause, and I got on a limb. We think 3.6% for quite a few months. I wouldn't even be surprised to see 3.6% at Christmas. Okay, so first first cut before Christmas. What would that do to equity markets? I don't think we're going to get a cut either. I think they're just going to sit pat. They've done a lot of hard work. I could say damage to the Australian economy. We're all going to see how bad that is over the next six months when the mortgage cliff approaches or comes into play, I should say. And at that point in time, they can assess how strong or weak the economy is. After getting here, I think it would be ludicrous to cut personally. Okay, so if we see a pause today, that will be supportive for equities, you would think? Um, of course, by definition, a lot more supportive than a rate hike. I yeah. think the problem is we have to be a little bit careful. I think the market has been looking for all that pause now for a while. So do I think the first 20 point knee jerk reaction will be up? Yes, I do. But I do believe the market's been looking for a pause for a while. Okay. So when I think about what a hike or a pause will do potentially to certain sectors, um, what about the home builders? What about building activity? We saw data yesterday showing that approvals rising. We're seeing house prices rising slightly, but still. Is there a bit more positivity then around that space? I think there are. I think we've seen a situation, you read the papers on the weekend perhaps, we actually saw some homes being sold at auction for above, well above their reserves, significantly above the reserves. We haven't seen that since last year, mm -hmm. um, or maybe even the year before. So there does just seem to be an undertone of improvement coming back into the home sector, in my opinion. US, it looks much better than here. And I feel like what we've got there is an interesting balance between how bad is this mortgage cliff going to be that I've talked about before. We've also got the press is full of the really big problem of the rental crisis in Australia far bigger than the banking crisis was in terms of Australian things. There's a lot of things to mm -hmm. weigh up here. We need more homes, we need more affordable homes sooner rather than later, especially I think 650,000 people coming into Australia yeah. in the next 12 months. Where are they going to live? Mm -hmm. No, I, I take your point on that and also the fact that some of those house price uh, gains that we've seen is just completely related to supply. So you had a chart there, US home builders versus Aussie home builders. James Hardy, we haven't seen the recovery in its share price in correspondence with that chart that we've just had out. We can bring up James Hardy's chart. Do you think that there's you know, a bit of upside here? We're long, a little bit frustrated by James Hardy. I, I must be honest, I thought it would be a bit higher at this stage of the cycle. You look at the US home builders, they've been much, much stronger than their own. Again, I keep talking about that mortgage cliff. I think that is holding our market back. It's a, a lot of uncertainty there. It's not a black swan event. We all know it's coming. We just don't quite know how big the impact is going to be. I think we're looking at an extra a half a million dollar mortgage is going to have an extra $800 per month coming out of mm -hmm. people's pockets. That's a lot of money. Million dollar mortgage, one, you know, 1600 we can all do those maths. So James Hardy, I would have thought, would have got a bit closer to the US builders. It hasn't, but I, we still think it's a great medium term play. It's halved. I think it's oversold. I think it's well positioned to the improvement in the US home builders and what's got to happen here. So it might frustrate a little bit longer, might frustrate a lot longer, but I think it's a really good value company at these prices. Do you have any other exposure that you would tag as being you know, exposed to the US housing recovery or the housing market here? Definitely the housing market here. We are long REA Group, which I've spoken to you yeah. about quite a few months, and it's working great. It's gone up by 50%. Um, since, you know, not quite since we've been long, we didn't buy the low, but it's still showing mm -hmm. us a very nice profit. And I think that's actually getting close to our target. You know, I can see that getting up to $145, $150 area. Then would you trim, sorry, <coughs> just to interrupt? We will. Yeah. We will be looking to trim in that sort of area. Are we planning to? Um, because that's already moved in anticipation of the recovery here. So stocks move, then they have a rest. Then we'll be looking for other stocks which haven't yet gone. But we do think we have to address in Australia this housing shortage. It's got to be addressed. And that means you've got to build. Okay, so if I'm looking at a company that offers good value still, that has that exposure to that eventual recovery and building? You could look at somewhere like CSR. I mean, that's um, it's relatively languishing. It's not very inspiring. But we have to be very careful. We are in a market at the moment, we have probably been for the last 18 months, where the market is rewarding quality and dismissing anyone that doesn't quite come up to that bar. So, you know, run the quality a bit further than you might think, trim, 
look at the underperformers exposure to the sector but don't necessarily expect them to start kicking goals too quickly in fact i'd rather buy them as they start to turn mm -hmm. than buy them in anticipation because they look cheap on paper because some of these stocks are looking cheap on paper for a long long time now what about a reliance worldwide which has a lot of exposure in the states or like a reese here which you could gain exposure to uh, you know the domestic building um i think i prefer the um reliance for the u.s exposure over 50 mm -hmm. percent it's run reasonably well there's a child up there thank you very much you know, I, can, that, I again, think that's Reese. Oh, sorry, that one is Reese. That has fallen by um, fifty percent. Very similar to James Hardy. Mm -hmm. Again, the same thing. It's starting to break out as we as we saw with REA Group. I think that's great value around seventeen dollars. I can see that going a lot lot higher.